on guys and welcome back to another episode so this episode today is going to be about rest of shamans and it's kind of a pve guide you can see what talents do i recommend what SRI traits are good and what rotation do i use to heal and how in the different situation do i heal as a rest of shaman and because rest of shaman can be hard for some and for myself i actually think it's a quite easy healer class I can see other healers is having a maybe a bit easier time, but I think it's a it's a fine spec. So let's just dive directly into it, and well, let's go directly to talents. <laughs> so on this page here, you can really see that I'm using what people call the left spec, because every row or the thing I have to take as default is in the left side. It looks like I'm a noob who doesn't know what to do, and I just took everything on the left side but basically this is my favorite to play with in dungeons and I will probably also play with this in PvP. Maybe in raid I will probably change for some more AoE but let's go through them and I can tell what I mean about every trade. So the first one here, Torrent is the most you can say go to talent because it increases the initial heal of Riptide so 30% Increase the initial heal from root type by 30, so you can see right now it heals 5400 and 5400 over 80 seconds. So if I remove it, it only heals 4000 now, but still the same over 80 seconds. So it just me, so the healing your casting one applies on you directly is increased by what was it 30%. And for me, I'm using quite much riptide, I'm actually trying to use riptide all the time, kind of trying to use riptide as my main healing. If I can, because I like to use Riptide and it's instant cast. Undulation is good if you like to spam healing surge and healing wave because every third healing surge or healing wave will 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 heal for additional 50%. So if you like really much to spam healing wave or healing surge, it's a great talent because it increased the healing by 50%. But Again, it depends on how much you actually spam undulation, uh, I mean healing wave or healing surge. I've, I'm trying mainly to use torrent, not torrent, or sorry, riptide to kind of heal my team. But of course, some situation you have to spam healing wave or healing surge to hold up the heal, the tank, sorry. Unleash life is probably the talent that most people is recommending because the cool thing is that it instant cast healing. 7000 so that means it actually heals more than torrent so what you can do is actually you can use unleash life so if i take unleash life here i could use unleash life first to heal 7000 and then the next healing will be 45 increased that means i can use riptide so riptide heals more and the healing over time will also heal more right now you can see it heals for 1200 if i use it again it will only heal for 800 so unleash life is probably the most recommended talents by, by everyone um, but it gives you additional spell that you have to use so if you don't like me right now doesn't really have any space for a new spell and you don't want to learn play with a new spell I would say stick to torrent because torrent is a great talent that makes you riptide heal more so I would say torrent and unleash life is a nice one the cool thing about unleash life just a little fact is you can actually go into ghost wolf and use it you don't even have to leave ghost wolf so it's great for pvp also but back to torrent so the next one here earth shield i cannot really recommend it because the healing is not that high so earth shield at the moment is very underrated and no one really plays with it the luch is is a fine talent but it really requires that your team is actually standing together so chain heals heals for additional 20 percent on the target but then you're healing uh he, well it heals 20 percent more if the target is standing inside healing rain or is affected by riptide but that means it really depends on people actually are standing in your healing rain and if they don't do this talent is so wasted and this means echo f elements I mean this is the most important talent for me myself because I love to spam healing stream totem so I post a healing stream totem and another one 
and these two, t two t totems, <laughs> totems can basically hold up my entire team in a hard encounter. So I can summon these two guys, they will be there for 15 seconds, and after 15 seconds when they disappear I just have to self heal, well you know, I just personally have to heal the next 15 seconds, and when the next 15 seconds is gone I can summon both totems again. Also Egg of Elements give you two charges of Riptide, so you have two charges of Riptide. At the moment I have three because of my PP talents. And it also gives you two charges of Lava Burst, so you can help a little bit on the DPS. So for me Egg of Elementals is the go-to. And if you have Torrent on Echo of Elementals, then you have two charges of Riptide that heals even more. I mean, what's not to like? It's a real nice talent. Awesome. The next one here is really just up to you. It doesn't really give you any good thing. I mean, you can have a stun with them. You already have the stun, but you can have a less cooldown on it. Earthcrab totem, but you don't really use Earthcrab in PvE. So, but I will probably recommend Spirit Wolf because if you are in an event where you get a lot of damage and you don't really have to heal right now, you can just go into your Spirit Wolf, take less damage, and you will run 20% faster. So, if the tank is very fast, you can, well, very quickly come up to him. The next one here, um, in, er in old days, Earthen Wall Totem was really nice, but now it only removes 1500 for each attack, so it's not a big shield anymore. It's only removing some of the damage of your attack. I mean, 1500 damage on each attack, it's not that much. And Ancestral Protection Talent Totem, don't ever take it because I mean, you always have a druid or death knight with you who can actually combat risk. So don't take it, never take it. So Earthen Wall Totem can be good, but again, it's so little reduction it does. So I will probably always say go with Ancestral Wigo, because every time you heal someone with Healing Wave, Healing Surge, Chain Heal, or Riptide, they'll increase the total health by 10. Initial heal gain increases increased health. So you can see here, maximum health increased by 10. So without this one here, I have 92k, and with this one here, I have high 100k life. So, as you can probably hear, these four talents at the moment, the left side is my most favorite, but you can also hear that you can take some of the other ones depending on situations. The next one here, again. Windrush Totem just helps your team running faster. Grayfield Spirit, well, I mean, Spirit Walker Grace, it removes one minute cooldown of it, so instead of two minutes cooldown, it has one minute cooldown. And it does so you can actually run around and heal for 50 seconds. And it also does the talent so you run 20% faster while you have it on. But I mean, it's not PvP, it's PvE, so why do you have to run around and heal? So I would probably say always go with Nature's Guardian because when you are under 35% health, you will instantly heal 20% of your maximum health. So we go up to 55% again. It's kind of a helping to you so you don't have to heal yourself when you're close to die because your talent is going to heal you. So you don't have to think about it. So I would probably say Nature's Guardian. The next one here, Cloudburst is... I don't like it. Uh, I don't really like it because I don't want to say goodbye to my healing totem. It's like you have to. It it will first heal after 50 seconds, and all the healing you have done, 30 percent of that will be splashed out and heal people. But I don't like that. I like small heals over time, all the time. So on this one here, both flash flute and downpour is actually a really good. So flash flute is probably the one I mainly play with. When you consume title wave, the cast of your next heal is reduced by 20. So that means, you can see here, I will use a spell. Right now my healing wave has a cast time of 1.6 seconds. So now I will consume a title wave. And next time now my, I use my spell, it has 1.8. Okay, that's a bit tricky. If I use Retide again, it's now 1.3. So now I have the speed bonus from my title wave and my, my talent. 
So that means if I use Riptide Healing Wave, it will be fast. If I use Riptide again, it will be even faster. So this one here just makes every time you use Riptide on yourself or someone else, and you actually use the charge of your Riptide uh, Tidal Wave, next time you cast a spell, it will be 20% faster. And it also affects your Chain Heal, so Chain Heal will be faster. It's just a passive that makes your rotation go easier, and you can cast spells faster. But Down Crew can actually be a very, very nice healing. I mean, you choose a rear where you heal, you cast time 1.4, and it heals 8,000 to everyone. And that's pretty much because your normal healing surge heals 9,000. So this one here actually just heals everyone in the area for 8,000. And the cooldown is only 5 seconds. And the mana is actually less than Healing Surge. So it's a really nice spam spell you can use all the time if you have to play uh, actually heal AoE healing. But passively, I would probably take Flash Float. But if you want an extra healing spell with 5 second cooldown that heals a lot of people, you can take it. And also I can see there's a trigger with it, because for each person that we actually heal by this talent, it will increase the cooldown by 5 seconds, so that means if you have 5 people in it, it will actually have a 25 second cooldown. And it makes it less attractive. So you can play with it if you want to have a good healing spell for everyone, but i probably stick with Flash Root. And the last room. So Ascendant is not really worth at the moment. Maybe when it gets above it will be worth, but at the moment it's not really worth. The healing that it's doing over the 50 seconds that it's duplicating is not that worth from the other ones. High Tide is probably the one that is most recommended of all the talents down here, because it heals additional ones. So right now, if I remove it, I can heal 4 people with it, my chain heal. With high tide, I can heal five people with chain heal, but it also every time you know that it, when it bounces to a new target chain heal, this talent here makes so every time it bounces to a new target, it, and its fall off with each bounce is reduced by half. So let's say I heal number one, and number two will get let's say 50% of that. That will now only be half of it, so it will actually heal more to everyone that it bounced to. So, if you like to use Chain Heal, as you should do when you play Shaman, I would recommend High Tide, because now it heals everyone in the party. So when you're doing Mythic Dungeons, where you're 5 people, it's a great talent, because it will heal everyone in the, in the party. Wellspring can also be used. You can see here when you use it, it creates a big flow that will go in front of you and heal everyone for 7,000. And so if you are in a raid, let's say 20 people is standing in front of you, Wellspring is probably the best one because it will heal everyone in front of you. But if you play in a dungeon, I would probably say High Tide, but again High Tide can also be very good in a dungeon, or sorry, in a raid, because it does, your chain healer will be a lot strong. So Wellspring can be used every 20 seconds. But again, high tide can be used all the time because it just makes your chain heal double effective. So I would probably say high tide is my recommendation, but wellspring is also nice for a big burst. I mean, if you if you take downpour and wellspring together, then you have two very strong AoE healing spells. But I'm a person who likes passives in some kind of way, so I would probably take flash fluid and high tide. Because then I can use my Riptide, use my Healing Wave, now I have 20% faster cast time, and I can use my Chain Heal, and it heals more now to everyone. So this will probably be the recommendation I would go with. For the Azerite traits, this one here, Swelling Stream, is a really nice talent, or it's not talent, but a trait that I think everyone should try to play with. Because it makes every time I use my healing totems, they actually also chain heal. So you can see here now, they chain heal. Every, they heal normally, but every third second, they will also chain heal. 
and that means when you have two of those guys up and you use chain heal, you have a lot of chain heal on one time. So it's a perfect talent. Uh, Azerite trade, sorry. Um, else for Azerite trade about healing. Overflowing shores can also be nice because it's increased your healing rate by makes it 10% uh, larger. And when you cast it, it instantly heals amount of the healing. So instead of it this great big, you can say it will be 10% bigger, but it's not really not, not that needed. But healing stream, swelling stream. If you can stack free Azerite trades on that one, that would be very nice. About my healing rotation, I would say I normally every time my tank is pulling a group, the first thing I do is use a healing rain under him. And if he's here, if he's a good tank, he will stay inside it. Then I use one Riptide on him. And my Riptide and my healing range should actually be enough in heroic and normal dungeons to actually hold up. So keep up my healing range, keep up my Riptide on him. So I have two healings over time on him. And this should actually be kind of enough for you to hold him up in a raid, uh, sorry, in a dungeon or a normal dungeon. I know in Mythic you have to spam a little bit more, but in a normal dungeon and heroic, this should be fine. And of course, if he's missing more health, spam healing wave because healing wave doesn't cost any. You, you can't go out of mana with healing wave. So, what you can do is healing rain, riptide, and spam healing wave on the tank because you can't go out of mana with that. And of course, if healing rain and riptide is enough, then just let it be and get full mana all the time. If you're feeling that some of the packs is hard to heal against, use Capacitator Totem because it stuns all the mobs for what is it? It doesn't say how much, but what I mean it's five seconds it stuns, and that means five seconds you don't have to heal and everyone can DPS without problems. And keep in mind you're shaman, so one of your most powerful spells is Tremor Totem. So let's say if you're going into the dungeon called Ataldasar, a lot of mobs are going to fear you. So every time you're going against these mobs and you can see no one is interrupting, you, be very fast to cause Tremor Totem and no one can be feared. And actually on the first boss, Rissan, you can actually use on his ability that terrifying visage, you can actually use your Tremor Totem on it. So when he makes everyone fear, you just use your Tremor Totem and no one is feared. So a shaman can really encounter that boss. And just a little tip, if you want to help on the DPS, summon your Earth Elemental and throw a Flame Shock on the boss and the Earth Elemental will actually automatically deal so much damage with your Flame Dot that you will probably deal 10 or 20% of all. You know, you will, on the damage meter, you will be a little 10% or 20% or something like that what all the other guys have been doing. So it's kind of a helping. And Flame Shock is also doing that your Lava Burst will be uh, free to cast sometimes. You can go away now. And if the tank is really close to die, I recommend using Spirit Link Totem. Use it on him, run over to him, because everyone then will have the same health pool. And it really helps you that you just can spam him with some healing and it will actually heal everyone around him. And Spirit Walker Grace is fine if you want to run and heal at the same time. But in most cases, tanks is just standing still and you can heal them with standing still. And if my tank is getting in a big trouble and I can see everyone is missing health, what I do is then I pop up both my healing stream totems and my healing tide token. So now I have three totem that is spamming healings and I basically don't have to do anything for 50 seconds. Of course, if everyone is dying, you can heal, but now it's like having small, f small free healers that is actually helping you. Uh, and the most important thing is, of course, your bloodlust. Keep in mind, use always bloodlust on first boss and last boss, because if you use it on first boss, it will be ready for last boss. It's so always first boss and last boss. Um, and also, you had. For Mythic Dungeons, you will be needing to use Hex because mobs are dealing so much damage. And you also have your Purify Spirit that can remove all curse and magic effects. And of course, your cooldown here is 
astral shift that deals so every you can say all 40 percent of damage you're taking will be removed it's a nice cooldown if someone is going on you else i think that's basically pretty much that i mean rest of shaman is i would say pretty easy healer also but can also be hard in some cases you don't have so much healing or you don't have so strong healing over time and absorption so you're pretty much a healer that is always on you always have to heal you always have to do something you cannot just like a druid put, pop, I put a lot of hots on him and it, it will heal automatically or a discipline priest where you can put up some shields and it will automatically you know kind of shield him you, you, you're playing like a holy paladin where you actually have to do business all the time so but if you like this type, type of healer I would highly recommend to play it and remember we're using shield so that means we have 10% block so every time you take some melee attacks you have a chance to block it and the damage will then reduce by 30 and again because of the shield you also get 1200 armor so you have 3000 armor as elemental oh sorry restoration shaman of course paladins have more armor because they use plate but again I mean, it's a pretty cool thing because you have more armor than druids and breezes and all that. So you can take some more melee damage. So, yeah. So, that was pretty much that. Um, we forgot to cover the most important thing. We have the mastery. Increase healing from your spells by up to 51 based on the current health of your target. That just means... The lower the target is, the more you will heal. So if he's on 10%, you will heal a lot. If he's on 100%, you don't heal so much. So, yeah. So I think that's pretty much all that about Restoration Shamans. So if you have any questions, leave down a comment. Else I can just say thanks you guys for watching, and see you in Battlefest.